right, guys. Good boy 32 here. Check it out. We're going to be talking about precision rifles. I know what you thought. We're going to be talking about guns. Let's get it on up there and see what happens. Stand by. All right, guys. Good boy 32 here. Check it out. So we're sitting back out here at the long range, 1,000 yards. And uh, today we're going to be talking about rifle selection. But before we do, one of the things I wanted to do was take a couple shots. Now, the interesting part about this whole deal, the rabbit hole we go into, and we'll, we'll talk, start talking about this a little bit when we start talking about rifles. And, and I want to go through the approach that I did. I'm not going to go over the details of what's good and what's bad or whatever, because if you're serious about this, you're going to be doing that research yourself. I mean, I don't care if you spend 700 or 7,000. You need to know what your rifle you're getting into and what its capabilities are. But before we did that, I took this thing out the other day. I actually uh, decided to use factory ammo. Uh, these are the Hornady, Hornady, <laughs> I got the 147 ELDs. These things are just unreal. Uh, so I used a couple different selections for the ballistics apps. And the one that I actually had on my phone was the um, Applied Ballistics. And it's a funny story how that all came about. But what I did is I forced myself to sit down and I learned how to do it and I learned what not only the information that you have to put into the app but why you have to put the information into the app now this is kinda of gonna be an interesting thing because uh, from right here what I want to do is I have a target out there with six inch uh, show me or whatever you want to call this thing six inches uh, at 700 yards and I'm going to input that information based on all my environmentals uh, as well as my muzzle velocity as well as the ballistic coefficient uh, for this particular round and we hopefully will hit that target so let's just see and then when we get done with that we'll, we'll go ahead and jump into this whole thing uh, as it relates to selecting a rifle so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my applied ballistics and I'm going to bring it down to 700. I've already put all the environmentals in. I think we've got more uh, or less a tailwind, but I'm gonna hold for a five knot wind. And we're gonna hold 0.4 mils to the right, I think. So let's go ahead and pop around up there. I don't know. I might be sending the coordinates to this month's Playboy Playmate. I'm just going to load one round at a time. Let's see how it goes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dial in 4.6. So, uh, and I'm going to hold a uh, half mil or 0.4 mils to the right. And the nice thing is this thing has uh, two tenths mil dots right there at the chevron. So all I got to do is hold on the second mil dot because that's 0.4. Let's see if this thing hits. Okay. Let's just do four. This stuff's expensive. So now what we're going to do is I went 4.6. Okay. So we're going to bump it up to 990. Because that's what that pink gong is. Three. 8.3, and we got a 0.6 mil hold. So, this I'll be able to see if I hit or not. Went up there a little while ago. It looked like we had more of a tailwind than anything. All right. There she is. One, that's two, three, there's six. I'm going to hold dead center on this thing. See how she rolls. The elevation was perfect. Not bad. Let's go ahead and put one more. Let's hold, put them on four, four mils right, four tenths. <laughs> Do that one more time.
Oh, good grief alive. One more time, because that's looking pretty good up there. So, I have two more targets up there that are painted orange, and those are at exactly 1,000 yards. So we're at 8.3 right now, so we need to come up two mils, or two tenths of a mil. And guys, this is the fun about it, right here. So it says hold seven mils right. I'm going to hold six because that was a little strong the last time. We're going to go for the left side. I'm digging this software stuff. This is pretty cool. Same thing. I sword over top of that. One more time. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and pop off on the right hand target. We'll do the whole same thing. You can see there's a ribbon up there. Oh. Got a little bit of wind. There we go. All right, one more. There we go. That's the one I wanted. All right, guys. Well, that's it. Let's go ahead and start talking about rifles. And I think what we'll do is uh, go on to one of the other ranges and have some fun with some steel over there. But we'll talk about the rifle. Stand by. All right, guys. Well, that was a lot of fun. And I'll tell you what. One of the best things about it is this rifle right here. Now, one of the things I'm not going to do is sit here and tell you about the, what criteria you need in order to do precision shooting. I would say you need a bolt-action rifle with a decent barrel. My round selection that I chose was 6.5 Creedmoor. Uh, 308. You can go long distance, but you're not going to go very long distance with a 308. Uh, I'm not going to get into the off rounds, but uh, 338 at Lopua, you're, you're, you're going to get your money back on that one. Uh, as long as you can reload, you're going to be doing pretty good. I'm not going to touch on, five, on 50 cal, but 6.5 Creedmoor is my chosen round. Now, what did I do as far as rifles? Well, let me tell you something. I, I was looking at the Savage. I was looking at the Ruger Precision. I was looking at the other one that I can't remember the damn name of that uh, the, that I was gonna, I was actually going to get a real good deal through it through uh, Big Daddy Unlimited. Uh, but what I found was one of my good friends, WTF SoCal, had this guy right here. And one of the best things you can do is if you can find a slightly used rifle. I actually had the round count. There was only 100 rounds that went through this rifle. And... He gave me one hell of a deal. So I would say that if you had somebody who would, who you knew that was doing precision shooting, get in get involved with them. And when they move up and you can find a rifle at an extremely good price, take advantage of it. Get the bigger bang for the buck if you can. This rifle right here, I want to say it retails for about thirty three five thirty four hundred, and this is the Curtis Axiom. Uh, action custom action with a 60 degree throw in it and it has a trigger tech trigger in it uh it, it is absolutely awesome but i picked this guy up for almost well two-thirds of what it would normally cost me if i had to buy it and i owe that to my good friend wtf socal in any case also talk to the, your people around you who are doing precision shooting see if they know of somebody who's going up in the world somebody who may be going into the accuracy international type thing that's where uh, 
SoCal went. He went in that direction. He had this sitting around, and next thing you know, boom. He also had a Christensen Arms, and I know who's got that thing, uh, X-Spring. But in any case, the fun part about it is going through and the Tika, <laughs> Tika TX3. So anyway, uh, the Tika, you can pick those things up $1,600. I'm talking about the good Tika. But uh, one of the cool things is learning all about the rifle, the pursuit of the perfect rifle. That, in my opinion, was one of the best parts about learning what is what a rifle has in it. So am I saying go out and spend $1,800, $2,000? No. But what I am saying is take the time to learn about the rifle that you want. Pick that scope. Pick not the scope, but the scope of work. What are you going to be shooting with? Are you Are going to be varminting? Are you going to be shooting targets at 1,000? You are going to shoot out to a mile? That's what I'm talking about, the fun of the pursuit and the nights that you will sit up all night long thinking about what that rifle is going to be all about. So that's it. That's what did I do? I did all my research. I was looking at a Savage. Uh, then I was looking at the Ruger Precision because you can do anything you want with a Ruger Precision. Uh, then I was thinking, I, I saw one of my stores had the Christensen Arms, and I even looked at a Barrett, and I, uh, you know, the uh, MRAD. And there were so many variables out there, I was almost pulling my hair out until, again, one of my buddies said, I tell you what, I'll make you a deal on this rifle. And that was all she wrote, but it was the fun of the pursuit. And that is the fun of getting into this thing. So with that being said, guys, if you like this video, I know it was kind of messy, but this is what this series is all about. I'm not going to sit here and talk about all the, you know, the little calculations and all the cool things that people get in. That's for you to learn on your own. You have to learn those on your own. And that's the cool part. So with that being said, the next episode, we're going to be talking about round selection. And that one's going to be pretty simple, 6.5 Creedmoor. And then we're going to move into scopes. Then we're going to talk about accessories, things of that nature. This is going to be a fun little series. It's going to be interesting, and I hope it will be for you. Scope 132, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Support the red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless those men, women, in uniform 24-7 for our freedom. Freedom is not free. I'm going to go back out there and shoot some steel. That was a blast. Let's go to Boy 32. I'm out. You guys have a great day. <laughs> this is an awesome setup. I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs>